So there's uh, many, many facets, many degree, uh, you know angles to take that from. I think the biggest part for me as a musician is being able to convey emotions and and a story. Even uh, I I like to just kind of sit. So my instrument's the piano, basically. Uh, there's variations of that. You know, you got a MIDI controller if you're sitting in a studio, loading whatever sample library, whatever sample sound that is you've got, and you can go you just go ham at it. I can play the guitar, the, the violin. I can play synthesizers all just from my keyboard. And having some background knowledge in playing the piano and the keyboard is is helpful for that. So as a musician, I, I pull from all these different styles and genres growing up playing classical to pop and whatever, you know being able to just sit down and play a melody. Granted, not all of them are, you know, stellar the first time around. If that was the case, I would probably wouldn't be, you know, having a home studio. I'd probably be somewhere in LA or New York, you know? Yep. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a gift. It's a, you know, a talent that's got to be worked on. I thank God for my, for my abilities and, and the opportunities that he's given me. And I think that's a, a big component of that is just honing your craft, working at it. Even when it's a hard day, that's kind of what you got to push through. And uh, I don't know, music's inspiring. It inspires me to to play better, to play different, to inspire others even. Um, so that's kind of a very broad, I guess, answer. But to me, musician is kind of incorporating all those things, the technical, the emotional, the spiritual, the physical, all of that. Man, you said a lot right there, you know. <laughs> um, it's like you take it as a, it's a science to you, you know. Um, you're going to school for, for uh, what exactly? So the degree is called commercial music, and okay. it basically just entails everything for um, the composer to be able to make the style that he wants to and be able to make money doing it. Okay, so um, now let's go back to uh, the list of instruments you play. Now, what stood out to me, which was very interesting besides the piano, because I didn't tell you this before, but when I was uh, younger, around seven or eight, I took piano lessons, man. So yeah. I'm kind of familiar with, uh, uh, you know, fingering around on the piano with the keys um sure. but the violin man tell me about that so um here in my studio i've just got so they've got these are these sample libraries you know you, you can pull from all these sample packs and uh, instruments that have been pre-recorded and it helps knowing about how to play the instruments before i personally don't have a violin but i do have these sample libraries that allow me to plug in a keyboard to play through there and so I wish I played an acoustic violin and I have taken some string lessons before. So I understand the registers and the, the fingering patterns of how these instruments would actually be played live, which when you take into account all that helps the, re the recording in a studio sound that much more authentic. So the way that you trill your fingers over the string, the way that the, 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 you know, the player will slide into it, the bow, the angles that the bows are being played and uh, strings, man, they, they speak to you. Those yes. are, yes. Those are compared often to uh, to voices. If you listen to a cello, especially, mm. man, the strings they just they sing, you know. Okay, that's cool, man. That you 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 know that you're literate about you know what you what your uh, uh, your interest are, and yes, uh, possibly your uh, well, it's your career at this point, I would say. Yeah, and um, it's cool to hear someone so uh, musically gifted, if I can say that. And um, <laughs> I, I, yeah, and I want you to elaborate on your your piano now because that's also an interest of mine. You know, okay. So uh, I mean, as we were talking a little bit off stage yesterday, um, I've been playing the piano since I was five. And to be frank with you, man, I hate piano lessons. My mom would make me practice, and, and bless her heart for you know, she would pay for my lessons. She would take me, and all she asked me to do was practice, and and I couldn't. I had a hard time, so I. I quickly learned that if I could listen to the song that I could figure out how to play it back, just, you know, use my ears orally. And, and for a while that got me by, my teachers would be impressed, like, way to go. You got this. Then they put a sheet music in front of me. That's, you know, Mozart or Beethoven, um, some Handel. And I'm just, okay, I can't just listen to this and be able to play it back anymore. And that's when things started to get more frustrating was, okay, now I've got these virtuoso hand piano practices every day. I've got to do my scales. I've got to do chord progressions. I've got to do sight reading and transpositions or uh, taking original song in one key and then playing it back in another key. And, you know, the things just start gotten progressively harder. And I realized that I liked playing my own music more than somebody else's, you know, 
there's just some level of satisfaction of being able to play a song for somebody and then be amazed at it that, you know, this wasn't written by somebody in the Baroque period or the Renaissance or heck, even someone who, you know, is writing stuff today. This new age classical music that's out there is, is amazing. And I guess I'd consider myself for my piano music more in that genre. But going back to my lessons, I just, you know, I got to high school. I was like, you know, what? I'm, I think I want to be done. You know, all the technical practice and all the, the skills, as I was mentioning, is just, it, was, it wasn't my thing. But come to find out, I played, you know, two hours, three, four hours a day when my mom wasn't asking me to practice, which mm. is funny. She, she would be like, why couldn't you do this when, when you're going to see your, your tutors every week? And, and really, I think it was just the, you know, the mindset, the switch of I can write my own music and I can create these things because of my background. However, I do wish I had spent more time on technical things back, you know, when I was in high school. Now I'm having to kind of relearn some of that through college, which is awesome. But yeah, it was it was quite the experience to to just stop entirely and and be able to play much more. And uh, now now I've got on the side, I'm I'm, I'm writing music for for Spotify. I'm getting right. music uh, here in an orchestral EP, even that's going to be coming out here this next year. Um, some music videos are in the works, just of you know some some. Uh, some performance videos, and I've got some connections with um, Warner Brothers through this university that I'm going to to eventually work on that little little thing, some more, some orchestral things. So as I was playing the piano, I I would work on playing in different keys, major, minor songs, songs in different modes, and I was watching the uh, Avengers. Those are some of my favorite movies, and as I was listening to these soundtracks, I just I could visualize the movie in my head. And I, you know, I wasn't even watching nothing. I was just sitting there, listening to the these these scores being played, and was thinking, you know, I could find that on the piano. So I started playing some of these on the piano, and my mind just kind of exploded. Like well, I never thought about doing film music before, mm. but amazing to me just this transition of a five year old, you know, me playing on the piano, not wanting to practice, loving to 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 write his own music. His mom telling him that you know he's got it, and she's been such a huge support, my family, yeah. to to now with that, with that piano can, you know, play anything to eventually write my own music and transition that into a, a different arrangement of, of, of orchestral and, and pop music even. That's so cool, man. That's really, really cool. And what's the next instrument that you know how to play? The next instrument, just small little ukulele. Actually, I got that there in that corner. Uh, I like goofing around on the ukulele. There's something about, you know, those strings that just kind of high end and, and tinkly that you can, can mess with and uh, what is that instrument again i'm sorry the ukulele oh okay uh I would i mean if it wouldn't be an inconvenience uh well no you don't have to pull it out but uh how do you play it is it like a guitar what 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 is it oh yeah yeah no actually let me just grab that real quick okay okay it's just you back in that corner okay so i uh a few years back was trying to play the guitar and realize that, you know, so I'm a, I hit, I hit my growth spurt later in life. I was, you know, four, 10, four, 11 for a good part of, of, of uh, eighth grade to high school and had a hard time wrapping my hand around. Oh, oh I think I remember that. It's, yeah. let me see. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a little it's guitar. That, and yeah. Oh, okay. Got you. So I, I like using this in, in some of the more, uh, I don't know. It just kind of adds a different flavor to things. I like to try and keep things as organically as possible. Nice. Um, it gives you that human touch. If I'm playing a ukulele, you know, and I happen to mess up, it, it still has some more of a of a holistic tone to it rather than something of a synthesizer trying to make something up. Same thing with the piano. I, I used to try and do recordings of a piano just in a studio where I can do a direct input into the computer to record. But there's just mm. it's just missing some human element to that. Right, exactly. And the listener, yeah. you can tell a difference. Right, right. So, so before we go any further, uh, because I'm still interested in the pick lily, right? Um, what are your influences in uh, strings? Because it sounds like you, you know, you um, have some classical rock influence there. So, some of my influence definitely. Um, now, if we're talking about some some rock. Uh, Rock is is my has been my go to for for working out. Um, 
for a while. And I, I really like some of the older. I love the ACDC, yes. Ben Halen. Okay, uh, okay. I love me some some Def Leppard. And, uh, all right, I, all right. You're talking my era, man. You're not that old to really know about that. But, you know, okay. <laughs> I, got a, I got a good dad who uh, – Okay. It's funny. We listen to we we we've been watching some college football and ASU down here is our team. Okay. So last night before watching the game, he's playing uh running with the devils, Van Halen and Okay. You know, he's loving some back and black and, and I just kinda kinda hooked onto that just and what's really cool is these songs are so simple, but they just bring so much raw emotion out well, of you. I'm gonna tell you one 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 rock song, man, uh, uh um excuse me, a string a string that really touches me to this day. Every time I hear it, I stop what I'm doing and listen to the whole song. It's um, what's that? Uh, Stairway to uh, Heaven, I believe. Stairway to Heaven, yeah. Yeah, by uh, is that Van Halen or uh, Black Sabbath? Um, uh, one of the no, it's, it's uh, I think it's Black Sabbath. Okay. Okay, and um, that song, man. If you if you're really into a you know uh, strings, listen to that, man. You know. Um, yeah, I can give you a whole list of well, you already said Death <laughs> Leopard, you already said ACDC, um, on and on and on. So now transitioning into other uh forms of music, how do you use your your strings to to make an impact on the genre that you're interested in? Your so, genre. Yeah, and and I think I think it's hard to say what my necessarily like a focus genre is. I think maybe right now I would say that uh instrumental piano solos might be my uh, my direction at the moment just because I have this the small recording space I have a, a place I go can go record live pianos with all my equipment but I, I am uh, you know as you know very very diverse and in, um, in my avenues of where I want to be I would love to you know have a piano recital mid-afternoon in New okay. York okay. and that night be going to Madison Square Garden and throwing a throwing a big uh, a big rager with lights and and synthesizers and all these big scores right and and that's really kind of the beauty of all this is i i can write what i want to write and craft however it is and and being an artist is is awesome with especially when i go and film you got creed which has pop and rap and orchestral in the movie then you've got you know you've got movies like uh parts Uh, of the caribbean and and i think Pulp Fiction, I think they they kind of like uh, uh, made that amalgamation a few times, right? Yeah, yeah. No, there's they and they pull from the. What I love is they pull from the culture. Yeah. They pull from you know the actual aspects that are going on. And before, you know, you get back early in the '70s and '80s, even some of the '90s, it's just traditional. And sure, it sounds great and it's cool, but being able to blend in pop and rap and hip hop and then the rock aspect of things, dude, there's just so many avenues that. I, I enjoy writing for. And so, yeah, going back to, to, to Black Sabbath, ACDC, I can take those simple power chord progressions of these huge rock anthems and then add some cool cello solos over the top. And ultimately, that's kind of what I want to do is a mixture with the with the symphony and the hybrid orchestra is with this album coming out or this EP here in January, um, in February, I want to release a mixture of these hybrids. So nice. you, you have these synthesizers down underneath kind of giving a solid bass while well, you've got these traditional sounds and it's amazing the combinations you can get when you mix these together. Yes. Um, I, I'm, I have to say that I want to give you a reference, man, of uh, an, uh, a producer that I like, man, in the hip hop yeah. world, but he just takes from everything. A producer named Harry Freud. Harry Freud. Who who's he worked yeah. with? Uh, French Montana, he's worked with uh, Max B. I think he's even worked with Jim Jones, you know, a lot of like hardcore, yeah, East Coast like rappers, and um, also a lot of grunge, uh, which um, you know, I, I kind of like. I like grunge, um, you know, I like uh, uh Limp Biscuit, I like uh, you know, Rest in Peace, uh, Nirvana, you know, mm-hmm. I always go to yellow, you know what I'm saying, when I'm <laughs> when I'm cold play, you know, yep, uh, so that's where I'm going with this, how they made that that amalgam how they made it work is that the direction that you're trying to take i would say yeah i would say you know and and there's just so much that i don't know at this point too i got probably a year year and a half left of college okay um i've got some internships lined up this past summer in uh for a a tv studio in la but with everything going on um you know take a back seat and i'm i'm not really in in a rush i mean i'm excited to get to my to my career and to start making some some money right but i also don't need to rush the process there right, for right. whatever reason 
I'm taking a break. God's got this. And I'm just uh, working at it one step at a time. And and so I, I love the blend. Like Coldplay, big yeah. inspiration of mine. Oh, I catch yeah. myself writing music. I'm like oh, that's yeah. like a Coldplay song, maybe a little too close. So I'll rework it, you know, try it again. Yeah. yeah. Um, and a lot of the things that have been, you know, popular recently has been these, these um, self-producing performers. You used to have, you know, Kanye West would go to a studio and he would have three, four producers and engineers in there with him. You know, even though he's the one mainly working on the track, you still got four or five people that have just got their hands in the pot. Mm. Whereas most people, or, or what's starting to be the trend is you get people like Charlie Puth, who's coming out and he's the producer. Then he mm. just brings in a mixer and a master. Mm -hmm. And so being able to be so versatile, not only stylistically, but also, hey, I can produce, I can sing, I can write, I can play. I just need someone to kind of put the finishing touches on. Right. That's right. really, you know, something that's been been proven to be the moneymaker now. Now you now now these labels can spend less on the production. Right. They can spend more on promoting and right. And that's kind of one of those styles that the way that I'm going for. And yeah. and Coldplay was a, a big star of that. They produced their own music, they played it live, um, and then mixing in these cool orchestral elements with their rock. And then you're not even seeing these EDM artists. You go to these concerts and like, wait, that's a that's a string section playing in there. Those are some horns. Mm. Plus, you know, this wob wob bass that's you know pounding every beat. And you know, Kanye West he also samples a lot of orchestral sounds. I really like Logic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Logic, man, he pulls from this these these jazz and R and B. Mm. And I I really thoroughly enjoy listening to his chord progressions and the way that they do that. So, um. Yeah, mixing those two, I think, just pulls out so much more. And it's more authentic, you know, to me, to hear my background. And that's just going to, I don't know, I'm still working on my sound, as you could say. Yeah. And I think that just comes with experience. And I'm still a young guy, and it'll, right. it'll happen. So I'll tell you, man, uh, one of the, the biggest conglomerations or amalgamations of classical and hip hop was um and it's a move it's it's an orchestra that i've seen personally i went to broadway in new york when i was a little guy man maybe 10 11 years old in school uh shout out to my boy sean he uh we went to school together and uh we used to, you know our class used to go to orchestras and stuff like that oh little, nice little orphan annie man it's <laughs> a hard knock life with uh jay-z and um that was one of the uh the hits but before that you had, um, I think it was ACDC and Run DMC with the hard rock, you know? Yeah. So, like, this is nothing new where I'm going with this. And it's all about perfecting the craft. Like you said, you find, you're searching for your niche, you know? And um, I I, I, I'm kind of interested more into, um, more into where you think your direction is going, where, with your art, you know, like, where exactly... Are you trying to go? So I have I have an end an end game an end plan and uh, I've been you know I've been trying one way or the other to I see myself in in ten years making making it big writing music for for film okay and writing music for for pop artists that are are touring or me myself going on oh, tour okay I'm I'm sorry for cutting you off so basically you want to be a writer. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you want to write music? I want to be a full-time composer, producer, performer. Okay. See, you, you got a lot going on. <laughs> <laughs> you got a lot going on. And it, and it's awesome. I like it. It's dope because you're young, 23 years old. When I was 23 years old, I was in college too, man. You know, uh, actually I was, no, I wasn't in college. Excuse me. That's a whole other story where <laughs> I was at in 23. But the bottom line is, is that, you know, um, at that age, you're, Everything is at your your grasp, and your motivate your motivation to me at my age. So, how do you think that you can be influential to others with what you're doing? I think about that a lot, actually. I don't want to just be, you know. There's these all these people who who are just looking for the next check or or the next uh, the next opportunity to perform and to to. I mean, there's just all this. It's all about me kind of attitude. And granted, that is easy to be sucked into. You, you, you got to put food on the table. You got to take care of yourself. You also want to feel accomplished, right? You got to show other people that, hey, hey, I worked hard for this. I deserve it. And and, and you'll get yours. I I'm, I believe that. I think I think uh, 
being an inspiration to others, though, has is, is been something I've been thinking a lot about. I mean, look at uh, LeBron James. He's He might be one of the most famous people, uh, especially in basketball, obviously, but the, the amount of kids that look up to him, the amount of, of parents who encourage their kids because of his example, you know, and, and he's whoever, whoever he is on and off the court, you know, that's, that's him. But as far as competing and being on the court, he's, he's an athlete. He's, he's tough to guard. He wins and he's, and because of that, he's got this a platform outside of basketball, right? He's, he's no longer just LeBron James. He's got to watch what he does. He's planting seeds everywhere he goes for the younger generation or even for people, you know, his age, he's just, and in, and in, in the same respect, I would like, you know, to be able to be that kind of an influence. How much can I, you know, be an influence in my community with just people mm. who know me? And if that's all it is and I make, you know, help one person, you know, reach their goal, I, you know, that's great. Right. But I see it on a more, on a bigger scale. Like I would love to be going around and, and people see me and are just motivated, inspired. Like I didn't, I didn't come up from, from a whole lot. I mean, my, my parents work hard and, and the stuff that I've got here in my room, I've had to work for the the schooling i don't have any student loan because i've i've worked hard to get scholarships and paid off and you know it's 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 more motivating to come from nothing than it is to you know be given all of these opportunities you know my dad was my dad was in hollywood and so i got a gig i just think there's so much to be said about the person who who works their butt off hard hard all day all night you know praying for the praying for a break getting up at 5 a.m being dedicated and it's all mental. You know, if I woke up and did the same things a successful person did that makes a billion dollars every day, every year, excuse me, and I, I'm making maybe a hundred thousand, there's the one thing is just that mental shift. It's it's I am this person. I don't do the things that are lazy that that keep me down. I am successful, I'm driven, and it's it's building this this self-image. And so as I'm doing this this music, it's easy to get stuck at the piano, like I can't write today. I'm a terrible composer. Uh, and these are things that go through my head. You know, I'm, I'm not perfect. I, I, I psych myself out a lot. Right. But, but as I'm sitting there just thinking, you know, the break's going to come, the money's going to come, you know, the, the family's going to come, the, the, the new studio is going to come, whatever it is. And, and I like that to hear that, you know, it's, it's motivational to see people to be successful and, and dude, you're, you're motivational as well. Like you're, oh, thanks, you're starting this, this podcast, <laughs> this magazine here. You, yeah. you haven't done this for too long, but you're getting people to to show up and yeah. you're showing out. I think that that's awesome. And it, you. getting this this collab together of people to to boost each other up. Yep. Like there's so much negativity going around that we we don't need more people that that are just looking for another check who look who are looking to to boost themselves. We need more people who give each other opportunities, more people to change and help mindsets to to bump up to the next level. Even if I'm going a different direction musically than than you are, like. W- why can't we be be there for each other? You're, this is obviously a great way to to help each other out, and and again, I'm just so grateful for that because um, I'm 23, trying to figure out how to make this all work organically, and right. and here comes this opportunity, and of course, yes. I'll take it. Yes, yes, and um, you know, once again, man, I'm just uh, I'm I'm flattered by how many people uh, appreciate my platform. It, it, it's really truly amazing that um, you know, uh, uh, people show gratitude nowadays, and you know, um. It's a wonderful thing what you that what you just said. That's that's wonderful. You really had me captivated. Um, and uh, just one person, if you can touch one person, I think that's awesome. But more moreover, just being a, a positive contributing citizen of the United States, man. That's all you really owe yourself is to contribute to your life. That's it, and just make that difference in your family if you can. That's it. You don't really, you know, we get caught up in the, we have to save the world thing. <laughs> That's not going to happen individually. You know, um, I think individual uh, progress is what makes us better people. And I think that you're a shining example of the future and the creativity that the future has and holds for us, you know. And um, I think that you are very influential to the youth. And I think that when they see this, that they will reach out to other people will reach out to you, not just the youth, but other uh, uh, people in your field, you know, will reach out to you and want to work with you because I'm excited that you're so young and that you're so crafty that you have an eclectic uh, perspective on a lot of different things so far. And that just 
continues to grow. It's like, you know, your near, you know, your neurons, man, the, the tentacles, the, the, the dendrites, they start to extend in your, you know, your nervous system and your brain. You know what I mean? And yeah. they, they're, they're wide open. The field is wide open for you is what I'm saying. And other kids, man, not kids, you're a man, you know, but kids and, you know, young adults will um, be inspired by people like you. That's what this platform is for. And if, you know, if it's not inspirational in some way, form or fashion, then this is not the right platform. So moving past that, um, where are you at now in your life? You said in the beginning that um, you had something going on in L.A. Uh, uh, but of course, you know, we know being, you know, uh, uh, you're in, in this COVID situation, it's impossible. So what are you uh, trying to work on now exactly? I've had to be a little more uh, to, to get things out. So I, because of COVID, I came home from school and that's right. where I was just, you know, I gotta, I gotta figure out how I'm going to get this going. I can't be taking time off from, from the progress I've been making. Okay. So like, well, I don't have any of the big studio equipment that I was recording at, at my university. So let's do right. what I can here. So I, I was looking around doing some research on, you know, people that are making money on Spotify, specifically in the, the acoustic, you know, instrumental world. It's like, I could do this. And, and now okay. that I've been working on that, I, I've gotten connections at some recording studios. Uh, nice. Shoot, I've just been able to do some things home and to make some studio magic happen uh, just to, to get my own sound there. <clears throat> um, so that's been awesome. I'm So I'm in Phoenix. That's where you know I grew up, my family is. Right. I'm here in Phoenix. I'm going back to school in January. I've got some, some private tutors up there who work for Warner Brothers who have been awesome. They, they not only practice, at, you know, they teach, but they practice their field while still being professors at this university. So that's a unique opportunity for me to, to collaborate daily with right. these people who right. who are successful already, and they're good family family men as well. They're not just like that. We were talking before. Like I want I want to be able to give give back as well as to contribute musically. Um. So that's that's kind of what where I'm at right now. I've got some music that I've been recording and been saving up. I've been doing some in home intimate concerts. Just because I, it's hard to book some some large studios right now and some other places to perform with, with COVID, so I've been been opening up my home, or I guess more. Just a, you know when you when you when you're experiencing music so much, more that is experienced, you feel the music, not just hear it, and just people always stressing about how to pay for bills or, or put food on the table or work is bothering them and family issues. And just as a place for them to escape and, and just listen for an hour to me to, to just kind of play something that will hopefully inspire and to give a break from the world. So I've done a couple of these concerts now and, and been received really well. And I have other, other people have offered to me to perform there. And it's not about the money. I, I'm not charging for these. It's just a way to, for me to, you know, give thanks to all the people that have listened and have been supporting me. And as I go back to Utah, um, I do have some opportunities there of which I can then take my, my talents and, and to share it with more people. And hopefully that doesn't ever stop. You know, um, I'm going to try to be doing some virtual concerts. I'm going to be trying to, to spread my right. audience to right. be torn around a little bit here in, in my own circle of influence in Arizona and in Utah, as well as then open up the new category. Jared's you know, produced music for piano solos. Now let's get them going on some orchestral. I've right. got some pop music lined up and things as well, but you know, that's to come right. taking it one step at a time. And, uh, here in this next two years, I'll be graduating. I've got some internships in LA here. Right on. Um, and so that's, you know, that those are the big moves that are coming up for me now. There you go, man. I mean, I wanted you to get into intricate detail because this is exactly what the youth needs to hear. I mean, yeah, I mean, times are, are rough, but we have a great example of how you can persevere in Thank times you. of despair, you know? Yes, sir. So I, I really, really appreciate you, Jared, for coming on my platform. Um, but I want you to give the people all of your social medias, how they can contact you, how they can reach out to you, collaborate with you. Um, of course, you're going to be on E2W Mag. So anyone who wants to reach out to Jared, you can check them out here on e2wmag.com. You can check them out on YouTube, East, E-A-S-T, 
the number two West W E S T M A G. That's YouTube. And then on Facebook, it's E2W Magazine. Instagram is also East, the number two West Magazine spelled straight out. So you will see Jared on these platforms, but let him give his personal platforms, so meet social media platforms so that you know they can reach out to you personally. Yeah, so I'm on uh, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram. Facebook it's just Jared McMurdy, just as it's on the screen. Um that'll have my my concert uh, my my music release dates. It'll have updates about just you know me, my personal life. Um feel free to to be involved in, in my 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 experience, my journey. And then my Instagram, it's jrodsky3. So J A Y R O D S K I, the number three. And again, on there is also similar to Facebook, just, you know, some of my personal life as well as mixed in with uh, a lot of my my uh, photo shoots, my publicity things from from my my own marketing. And that's just going to keep getting ramped up and up on YouTube. You can just search again, Jared McMurdy. Those will be my music, uh, my my Spotify singles. Everything just kind of is through my distributor that gets put out. So I'm on Apple Music. I'm on iTunes, YouTube, Amazon, Spotify. Anywhere you can stream music, you just type in my name. And I have two singles out right now. The first one was called River Run, which was okay. released in September. Nice. The second one's called Midnight Express, which was released in October. Unfortunately, with COVID, my next two projects kind of got postponed. But right. coming to you again in January will be uh, an EP followed by some orchestral things. So if you need music to study to or to meditate or ponder or just relax, Feel free to put me on repeat. <laughs> Feel free to listen to it and and share. Right. Um, this has all been through word of mouth, and and I'm very appreciative for everybody who's tuned in and you know given the opportunity to, to hear me. I know I'm a little scatterbrained. I I do have some ADHD tendencies, but it keeps me keeps everything exciting and motivated. So, right. um, but those are my platforms, and anybody that reaches out to me, I'm very good about getting back and and for the support. So, thank you so much for that. Oh man, it's awesome. Uh, the, the interview is not over actually. Oh, um, I just wanted you to get all that. <laughs> I just wanted you to get out, that out the way so that we won't forget it because oh, sure. I think that, you know, people will want to reach out to you at some point, but what do you want to offer to the people? What do you want to add in on our way out the door? Hmm. So for me, it's, it's been a lifetime goal to write music professionally and to do it full time. And so many people, I don't know, I guess this is with anything, not just with music, but anybody who's ever really pushed for something, it's almost as if the world tests you. It's like, are you serious? Do you, you really want to do that? You're like, well, no, I do. Roadblocks get put up. You know, you have some failures, you have some opportunities that fall through. And and then the world still asks, you know, you, you want to do this? Is this what you want? Are you serious? And And I don't know, man, for the longest time, I just, I just feel these these uh, workings within within me within within my environment and community. Just the universe is pulling for me, and it's and it's awesome to see things come together. And I I just I want that, and I want other people to know that they can reach that too. It's not just the one percent that gets to live successful and, and to be happy to live what they say the you know your best life or whatever. I th- I don't think that that's exclusive to to the elites or or to somebody who's you know, that just is unique to other people. We're, we all we all got that within us. And mine just happens to be in the avenue of music. People tell me, you know, quit music and get a real job. <laughs> right now I work for a, a construction door company to to help pay pay the bills and to, you know, I'm working my nine to five to right. help my future nine to five. And you do what you got to do, you know, nothing wrong with that. But it's exciting to see the momentum that's been picked up and been carried and the talent that's been, you know, worked on over and over countless hours in and out. And, and as I, as i get things going, it's my, it's my hope that people will listen and will latch onto this. And I wouldn't say I'm the most talented by far. There are, there are others that are genius and IQ is, is out, of the, out, of the, out of this world. But the one thing that I, I can say I'm appreciative and grateful for is, is this, the ability to, to communicate and to work with people I've gotten many opportunities just through the ability to to talk and have good interactions. And I think that says volumes for, you know, just, just for what it is that you're doing. If you can't communicate 
to your employer that you need a raise, that raise is never going to come. Right. If you can't communicate, you know, with a with a, a girlfriend, boyfriend, spouse, or whatever, you know, the the issues and things, that's going to be a you know a not so successful relationship. And and being able to communicate those thoughts even to to yourself and to others, that is that's what's going to carry you far. Being like you were saying, if you can just be a good influence in your family and help your family, mm-hmm. you know, that's gonna that's gonna spread out. Yeah. Trying to, you know, to be God and to take over the entire world and to change everybody to be with one person, it, you know, not, not likely to happen. Right. And that's kind of the same idea here with this music is, is I want to reach out to those who listen to piano music, those who listen to film scores, mm-hmm. um, you know, who people listen to rap, rap and hip hop. I can't rap. Uh, I, I I got that. But I, I can make some tracks and, and be be all, all in. And, and those are some of the, the hobbies that I have of of being able to dive into these styles and these genres and appreciate, you know, the culture that brought up this, the jazz, the, the hip hop, the, the classical. And as I, as I'm releasing this music, I hope that people see too, not just the, the, well, they don't just hear the melodies and, you know, the intricacies of the, the pieces, but that they see that I'm a, I'm a genuinely nice, genuinely caring person who's trying to make a difference. And, and I hope that through this, through your platform, people will see that, these people you interview that they are talented, they are great, but they have this whole other dimension inside to them as well. And I think that's awesome that you're able to bring that out in people. Um, I'm not a motivational speaker to say the least, but I do hope that I can be motivating and, and inspirational to others. I've even thought about doing a whole series where, I mean, I love listening to motivational speeches in the morning. Sometimes I can't get up. I can't go out and work and I'll throw on some, I'll throw on um, like law of attraction videos on YouTube or, or videos uh, inspirational and they've got such great music behind it. I've mm-hmm. even thought about doing like a series where I, I find these motivational speakers mm-hmm. who want to, to get their music out their their word out mm-hmm. and I can put some music to that. Right. And just how inspiring that can be. Right. Um, Cause really that's, that's what I'm about. I'm about the right. music. I'm about right. uplifting and inspiring other people. And, and I'm all about being able to take care of myself and my family. And, and that's through, through my, the medium, which I've chosen, which is music. And it's been it's been a ride, and you know, let's let's get some listens, let's get some people on Spotify, let's let's get people to check it out and see what I can do. And um, I don't know, the way that you're giving back is would be a, an awesome way for me in the future as I'm doing things to to contribute as well. Nice, nice man. I really appreciate that. I have one more question for you before I go. I'm all for it. What's that? All right, who wrote Jailhouse Rock? Jailhouse Rock. Oh man, now we're put me on the spot. Oh, I got another one for you. Um, ain't nothing but a hound dog. I want to say that was Elvis Presley. Okay. Jailhouse Rock. Wait, Jailhouse Rock wasn't that a movie with Elvis Presley in too? <laughs> hey, you seen my uh, my posters behind me, aren't you? <laughs> Testing me. Brain fart. Ah, all right. <laughs> so, in closing, I want to say I appreciate you, Jared. Um, it was wonderful speaking with you, man. I want to uh, continue to work with you um, and the youth so that you can proliferate what you're doing. And uh, I just want to say in closing, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Elvis Presley, man. One of the greatest, man. He called him the king of rock, you know. So check him out, man. Jailhouse Rock. And uh, I'm, not sure if, I'm not sure if he wrote the song, though, you know. But I think I'm not sure if Chubby Chuck- Checker wrote it or whoever. But he performed it. So it was kind of like a trick question. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering if you were going to yeah. mention anything. And at the end, I was so, uh, no, that's good. 